Hello there and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on advanced digital signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humenau University of Technology. I am Renato and on this notebook we are going to talk about complex signals and systems and the Hilbert transform. Imagine we would like to know the precise instantaneous amplitude of a sinus wave. Just looking at the function this might not be so easy. We would have to determine the maximum or minimum and depending on the sinusoidal frequency this might take some time during which the amplitude also might have changed. But if we have a complex exponential with samples given by this equation here, x of n is equal to a times e to the power of j omega n and then we can use some uh, trigonometry and exponential substitution and we find that this is equivalent of a times cosine of kappa omega n plus j a times sine of kappa omega n and in this case we know x of n but we don't know a and we like to know a this is the amplitude so we can easily determine the amplitude a only knowing one complex valued sample x of n by taking the magnitude of this complex exponential so here in this case here we have a complex exponential we will derive something until we have the possibility to have the amplitude of a sinusoid. So here is how we take the magnitude of this complex exponential with the real part squared times the imaginary part squared and the square root and then we replace here this is given by the real part and this is the imaginary part and this is our equation. So observe that this computation of A is independent of the time index N so it can be done at every time instance. So if we not only have the sine or cosine function in itself, but both, we can easily compute the instantaneous amplitude in this way. This means instead of just having the sinusoidal function, we also have the 90 degrees phase shift version of it to compute the amplitude. The problem is, if we only have one part, the real part, how do we get this 90 degrees phase shifted version. For example, look at the sine function. It already consists of two complex exponentials. So the sine function is equal to 1 divided by 2j e to the power of j omega n minus e to the power of minus j omega n. So we just have one exponential too many. If we look at it in the Fourier domain, we see that one exponential is at positive frequencies and the other is at negative frequencies. If we could remove one of the two exponentials, for instance at the negative frequencies, we would have reached our goal of obtaining a complex exponential for amplitude computations. So what we need is a filter which attenuates the negative frequencies and leaves the positive frequencies unchanged. So how do we obtain such a filter? First, we formulate our requirement in the frequency domain, the DTFT domain. So this is our requirement. It's going to be 1 for positive frequencies and 0 for negative frequencies. We could multiply our signal spectrum with this frequency domain formulation, which is often not practical. Or in the time domain, convolve with the impulse response of the resulting filter obtained with the inverse DTFT. So if we inverse this uh, formulation in the frequency domain, we apply the inverse DTFT, then we obtain the impulse response. So this is what we can do here. For n is not zero, this becomes this here with some more manip ma mathematical manipulations we obtain is here j divided by pi times n for n odd and 0 for n even for n equals to 0 this inverse the tft integral becomes h of 0 is 1 divided by 2 pi times pi equals to 1 divided by 2 hence the resulting impulse response of this one-sided filter becomes 1 divided by 2 times a delta n plus j divided by pi n for n odd or 0 for n even. This is now the resulting impulse response, the time domain of our filter, which passes all the positive frequencies 
and attenuates the negative frequencies. In this Python example, we are plotting the Hilbert transformer for n going from minus 10 to 10. So we're importing matplotlib to plot and numpy. Here we are defining our Hilbert transformer. And we see here this 2 divided by pi times n. And here we are plotting the impulse response of the Hilbert transform. So here we have value, here we have our samples. And we see that we have negative indices. If we want to obtain a causal system, we need to shift them to at or above zero using a suitable delay. Hence, the Hilbert transform involves some delay. Hence, to make the imaginary part and real part to fit to each other, we have to delay the real part accordingly. This type of complex signal with a one-sided spectrum is also called an analytic signal. Here we can see that the first part with the delta function represents the real part, which is the signal itself, signal convolved with the delta impulse, except for a factor of 2. The second part represents the imaginary part of our one-sided signal, the positive frequencies. So multiplying both parts with this factor of 2, for simplicity, we obtain the following structure. So x, real part, x, the Hilbert transform, J, the imaginary part, where the Hilbert transformer, H of H, is given by these um, equations here. So 2 divided by pi times n for n odd and 0 for n even. So you can also refer to the book Discrete Time Signal Processing by Oppenheim and Schaeffer. So the X, N is our real valued signal. Observe that only this part which creates the imaginary signal part is the Hilbert transformer. We can use it to construct a filter that suppresses the negative frequencies. This means we take our original signal, the sinusoid, and define it as our real part. Then we take the Hilbert filtered signal, filter with the above h of h, and define it as our imaginary part. Then both together have a one-sided positive only spectrum. That also means our Hilbert transform filter is our 90 degrees phase shifter that we were looking for. You can also imagine that if the real part is a cosine signal, then the Hilbert Let's transform take a look at the generates the J times sine part. Since we have included a delay, our phase should be our 90 degrees, the pi divided by 2 right, phase shift, plus the linear phase from the delay. Hence, our phase curve should hit the phase axis at frequency 0 at pi divided by 2, for which we would like to zoom in to this part. So we're uh, again using frac z from scipy signal and uh, matplotlib to plot and numpy, and we're calling frac z. And here is our frequency response. We have the magnitude, we have the phase, and here we can see that the phase curve indeed would hit the pi divided by 2 rad 90 degree mark at the phase axis. We see that the magnitude plot only reaches at about 0 dB attenuation at about frequency 0 0.08 pi and reaches higher attenuations at frequencies below about 0 0.05 pi and above about 0 0.95 pi. Hence, it is only a working Hilbert transformer within this range. If we want to plot the frequency response of our entire filter, not just the Hilbert transform part, which passes only the positive frequencies, we first need to construct our resulting complex filter and then plot the frequency response on the whole frequency circle. First, we need to create the corresponding delay unit pulse as the real part. So here we construct a delayed impulse to implement the delay for the real part. So we have the zeros, this one here, and then we add our imaginary part as a Hilbert transform to obtain our complex filter. So here we have this part here, which is the delayed impulse. Here we have our Hilbert transform here, multiplying with um, 1j. So we have our complex part as our Im imaginary part, and then we have our complex filter. So observe that this is our first complex value filter. We can cal calculate its frequency response, including the negative frequencies above pi. So we use in frac z, this argument whole equals to true, 
so we can include the negative part above pi and this is the frequency response of the complex filter so here we can see that we have indeed a passband at the positive frequencies between 0 and pi and observe that the passband is at about 60 dB 6 dB above 0 dB because we multiplied our filter by a factor of 2 to make it simpler the negative frequencies appear between pi and 2 pi frequency axis and we can see that we get about minus 30 dB attenuation there which is not very much but which we could increase it by making the filter longer this also gives us a good indication of how well our filter is working so the python function remes also has an option for a Hilbert transform filter and we get a similar design using the remes and we set the type to Hilbert and the frequency transform uh, frequency response is uh, showed here observe that the specified passband does not go all the way to 0 and 0 0.5 the further away the passband is from these edges the less ripples we will have in the passband and the more attenuation we will have for the negative frequencies so observe that the, this design now has a plus 90 degrees a phase shift at frequency close to 0 so this is a phase difference of 180 degrees from our previous design with the rectangular window and results from a sign change of the coefficients so again we can look at the um, resulting one-sided complex valued filter at the whole frequency circle again so we have our delay for the real part the complex filter now it's called h1 remis and here if we plot the frequency response like again setting whole equals to true and we see here that again only about minus 30 dB attenuation in the stop band which is now for the positive frequencies because of the sign change of our RMS filter and we obtain more practical filter with more attenuation in the stop band if we change the corner frequencies to more above 0 and below 0 0.5 in the RMS increasing the transition bandwidth also observe the equiripple behavior in the stop band which is what we expect from the remis. Now we can go back to the example for the measurement of the instantaneous amplitude of a sinusoid and we can test our application example uh, using our Hilbert transform design. We saw that the lower end for the passband of our design is at normalized frequency of about 0 0.05 hence we test a sinusoid of that frequency. So here we are constructing a sinusoid with that frequency and it's plot here now we can filter it uh, with our filter which passes only positive frequencies h1 and creates a complex value signal xh1 so this is we're convolving our signal with the h1 and then we're plotting the real part and the imaginary part and here we can see that we get indeed a 90 degree phase shifted version the red curve about between sample uh, 15 and 45 now we can compute the magnitude of this complex signal x h1 to obtain the amplitude of our sinusoidal signal so here abs of x h1 and we have here we see that about sample 15 and 45 we obtain the amplitude of our sinusoidal signal with about 10 percent accuracy which roughly corresponds to the minus 20 db attenuation corresponding to an attenuation factor of 0 0.1 that our filter h1 provides this also hints at the fact that we can improve the magnitude estimation by having a filter with a higher attenuation at negative frequencies but also observe that this only works for sinusoids inside our passband. 